Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Let's get started with today's video. Welcome back guys and on today's episode we're going to cover some of the elements you'll see on the camera's front page when accessing it through a web browser. And as I do with every episode, just a reminder that there's help behind that little yellow question mark at the top right hand corner of every screen. And as always there's Mobotics.com and Community.Mobotics.com for a superfluity of information. Superfluity means an unnecessarily or excessively large amount or number of something. Okay, let's get started. Coming across the top here, you'll see Mobotics S74. Typically, this is the model number, model name of the camera, followed by the factory IP address, or what some people call the serial number, and the fact that we're in a live view here. Uh, this is what will be up here dependent on the model camera, unless you've changed it in the network settings. You can actually change this away from the factory IP address to name it what you would like up here. Moving on down, we're now in the live screen here, camera's live image when I hover over that button. If I move just to the right, this is clicking on this will uh, present the event player. And again, this screen here will play back the start of events. It will not play through a video. It will just give you the start of events. Okay, coming up here to this other icon, multi-view. Again, kind of gives you, I only have one quick camera pulled up here in the browser right now, but you could have four different cameras uh, showing throughout this uh, browser. Okay, so we'll go back to the live view here. Moving on over, we've got uh, a frame adjustment. Hello, UPS man. We've got a frame adjustment here. Uh, by default, it comes up at 16 frames per second, uh, but that can be adjusted, uh, what you want the live view to show. Moving over to the right a little further, we've got uh, the selection of different items you can change on the fly here. Uh, so we got camera selection. You'll see here by the fact that I've got a right and left, I've got a dual uh, M73 up here right now. If I simply uh, click the left button, it'll show the left sensor module. Or I could click both and it will show both sensor modules. or auto, it will pick the one that has uh, currently the most uh, light available uh, at this point. If I was dealing with a color sensor and a black and white sensor, it would pull color up during the day. Auto, it would move to the black and white sensor. Okay, so I'll move that back to left here. Moving on over to the right, we've got what looks to be like a lock and what that does is gives you the ability of zooming in and then panning around the image okay so if you unlock this click on some spot that you wanted to view uh, and zoom in on the image so i'll click the road sign here with the crosshairs and then i'll just simply hit the zoom plus button and because i clicked on that image with the crosshairs, the zoom automatically keeps that in the center of the image. Okay, and then I could click the zoom back one section at a time. So again, just to show you, if I click on the fire hydrant here, it knows that that's what I wanted to zoom in on, so that'll keep that center frame. Okay, if I come back here, and I click off center somewhere, hitting the center pan button, it will bring me back to the full image in the center where I was before, okay? If I am zoomed in, 
I can come back to a non-zoomed view again just by clicking the one by zoom. Okay, if you don't want other viewers within their browsers to be able to do that, you would just simply lock this button here. Okay, the high Q button, basically that takes the image and sets it at its uh, highest quality image. So again, just clicking that once, no matter what you've done already through the exposure screen and the setting screen, Clicking this button is just a kind of a user click way, a quick way to bring the image to its highest quality. Okay, it'll give you instructions as to what it's going to do. You can store that information. So if I click yes, you'll see that it very quickly runs through those items, takes care of those settings and saves them to memory. Okay. Moving over to the right, we've got the save image, a little um, a disk here, saving an image. It's basically just saving a snapshot. So if I click this once, it's going to come up. By default, it's going to give you the factor HP address, the date, and the time, including seconds, where it's going to throw those images and the type of image. Okay, so if I simply hit save, You'll see here that it took a snapshot and there's the snapshot of the image. With this, you can do with it what you want, attach it to an email, uh, print it out, whatever you'd like. It's a simple file, just like any other file that you've saved. Moving further over to the right again, you've heard me say it before, the question mark is the information, help information. Again, uh, within the camera, which is um, a huge amount of information. And again, the little uh, lowercase i button is the camera status. And that will give you current information about the camera at a glance. Okay, we move over to what's called the soft buttons. Uh, the first soft button would be the admin menu where you would make administrative type changes, network type changes. Click that once. You guys have seen this before. That's where you access the admin menu. Come down and click setup menu. This is for settings of the cameras and event control and so forth and analytics. Certainly where you access the apps. Okay. You can click the X or click the home button. That will, page will go away. Some other user click or um, quick access buttons, uh, arm and record. Again, if you wanted to do these items here, save them to memory. I already have this camera armed, as you can see by the dot in the upper right hand corner of the image. It's armed for recording and as that truck passed by, you saw that it was recording. So I don't need to do this. If the camera is audio enabled, you can turn the audio on from here just by clicking this. And then again, any of these buttons, they're going to tell you what settings they're going to change, what it's going to do here. You click yes and it stores it to memory. I have no audio module on this particular S74 uh, out at the end of my driveway. So I'll click no. If you were utilizing MJPEG images, the MXPEG on will execute a command and turn basically MXPEG on and the live image would be coming through that particular codec. Another quick button to turn it back off. A UC event, uh, UC just simply stands for user click event. So you can set this up to do multiple things. Again, it's really up to you, but uh, you can, and also you can add buttons here, delete buttons, make color changes on the buttons. There's really a lot of, of versatility with these soft buttons. LEDs blink. If you simply click this button here, uh, if someone were out at the camera, they would see the LEDs blinking on and off the camera. That helps uh, it, like during installations where you've got two guys, one at the console, 
one guy out at the end and he wants to make sure that uh, you know you're viewing the right camera or he's at the right camera you you can blink those LEDs to kind of give a visual indication that uh, you both agree on uh, what camera that person is at and what he's viewing okay play sound again if the camera is enabled for audio with the speaker microphone uh, you can play a sound there is a uh, factory default uh, sound in there you guys have heard it before this is your Mobotics camera calling so clicking this button will activate that sound to play out at the uh, camera end okay we've got a soft button here for play last event okay so you remember the Gentleman came around here with the car. It went to the very last event that it that it uh, uh, saved at that point. Okay, we'll go and that'll immediately throw you into the player mode. We'll go back to live here. Event list. This one is one you'll use more often than not. It basically gives you a list of events from the very first event. You can see here that I cranked this camera out back in May, the 18th of May. And if I come back to the latest event, of course, that's going to be uh, today at 1.52 p.m. Okay, and basically what this uh, allows you is to, again, look for events uh, on the recorded device. Um, if you happen to pick one of these events, uh, let's say at 1.15 p.m. today, I could click on this hyperlink here and it'll basically just be the starting clip of that event comes up in this window it gives you the little hourglass with the plus sign which means you can uh, enlarge this image to the programmed size that your uh, resolution that you're recording at so if I click uh, plus here enlarge the screen there's the first uh, frame of that event uh, that was caused by uh, again activity sensor so the truck coming into uh, into view there so that's a neat way to search for um, search for, for events a uh, multi watcher had something to do more with uh, earlier versions of Internet Explorer again I explained the zooms and again you see some blank buttons down here uh, again, these uh, you can add to these buttons, change colors. You can create different events. Again, with these with these soft buttons, uh, a really versatile way to utilize the intelligence uh, within the camera. Some of the image on the screen, uh, you can see that I've um, wanting to display my frames per second, and you can see here right now I'm sitting at 31 frames per second with this particular live image. We've got the date, of course, the time that you can display in 24 hour uh, kind of military time or um, 12 hour standard time, AM, PM. OK, down here, uh, if you do have the camera armed for recording, it, it will display typically the uh, event numbers. You can see I'm at 35,000 events. Um, it'll show you the different uh, items that I have uh, enabled for events uh, this particular one um, FF group uh, LPR setting that I have currently in the camera that I'm using within uh, my camera here at the end of the driveway and then AS of course stands for activity sensor that's another event that I've got enabled uh, for recording on this event move over to the bottom right this kind of information is all about uh, how you're recording and where you're recording to okay so again that's about it guys if you've got more questions again always hit that little question mark there in the upper right hand corner and again a lot of information in here tell you about all the different uh, items you can change there's the uh, items about soft buttons um, the image area pan and tilt and zoom within the image Here's one interesting one, the error icon, what it means and how to make it go away from the image. So again, a lot of information in here. This is just a one page of, of, uh, of, of many, okay? So again, guys, that's about it. Hope this was helpful.
and we will see you next time.